Hi, this is Jen, and thanks for joining me today. Today I'm making a card using a visible image stamp set called Creative Chaos. I am also using a heavy doodle stencil called Circles of Life. And what inspired me to make this card was Hero Arts on their Instagram page is doing a, a month-long kind of challenge, I guess you could say. Um, and so if you go to the Hero Arts Instagram page, you can find out all kinds of information about what they're doing. Um, but there is going to be a giveaway. So the challenge for the week of March 1st through 7th is to use your favorite medium. And so that inspired me to create this card. This is more of a mixed media card. But the mediums, I like anything that, that works with water. So I love watercolor the shimmer powders, the sprays, um, the distress oxides, anything that reacts to water or has anything to do with water I just love and so I thought um, I would go ahead and make this card and post that um, on Instagram for the challenge. Um, I don't know if I mentioned they are giving, they're, they're having giveaways so if you want more information on the different challenges they're doing every week you can go ahead and go to the Hero Arts Instagram page and they will have that information. Um, so what I'm doing here is I've taken my We Are Memory Keepers stamping platform and I've put my paper down which I am using Yupo paper and so I've just set my stencil on that and I'm using the platform to uh, magnets to hold that down. So I'm taking a micron pen which is waterproof. Um, this is 05 and I'm just going and tracing out the circles of the stencil. So I started on one side of the stencil in the very middle and it did a half a circle and then I flipped over to the other side and I just flip back, keep flipping back and forth. I actually ended up messing this up so I flipped the Yupo paper over and I redid it on the other side. And then after I have traced out all my circles, I let it dry for maybe a minute or two. And then I'm taking a baby wipe and I am just taking off kind of the top layer of the ink, um, the Micron ink. I didn't want it as dark. I just wanted it to be kind of like a background thing, kind of a, a faded look, I guess you could say. And so I go ahead and take a baby wipe and just wipe off that top layer of ink and then I go back in with a paper towel and kind of buff it out I guess and um, get all the ink off and then I'm going to take one of these stamps in the visible image stamp set and I am inking that up with Ranger Black Archival Ink and I'm just going to take that stamp and stamp that in the very middle of the circle and then I follow the same process um, after letting it dry for a few minutes. I go ahead and go in with the baby wipe again and um, I clean that off so that it's faded. And you don't end up seeing this part really. It ends up being covered by the flower. But um, you can kind of see it at the, at the end result. But um, I wasn't sure exactly where I was going or where the placement of the flower was going to be when I started it. So... It didn't hurt to add that in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take my shimmer powders, and these are Lindy's, and they're called Lindy's. Actually, they're actually called Lindy's Magical Shakers. So they're a powder, and the ones that I'm using right here are Oompapa Pink, Polka Purple, Magnolia Magenta, and Alpine Ice. And I just love these colors, and so I'm I'm just going to experiment basically with the colors and moving the colors around. Um, the great thing about Yupo paper, it is non-porous, so it's not going to absorb the ink into the paper. So you have a lot of time to work with it. And also the other great thing is that you can use pretty much however much water you want to lighten the color or move the colors or whatever you want to do. And um, it, you have a lot of time to work with it. On the other hand, um, the color does move because it is non-porous. The paper is a synthetic paper, so the uh, the color does move with water a lot. So um, I end up I put a lot of water and kind of move this around and I'm experimenting and end up with too much water on it. And so I take a paper towel and I kind of dab at some spots. And once you remove color, the you know from one spot because there I had so much water the color just kind of moved 
to fill that spot in. Um, so it's great because it's really organic almost, um, which is something I just love about, you know, the mixed media stuff is there's not really, at least for me, there's not really like a huge plan. It's kind of just a lot of experimentation and seeing kind of what works and what doesn't. So um, I use this baby aspirator a lot. Um, I started using it a couple weeks ago and I absolutely love it. I think it's better than a, a, a straw because I don't have to lean over and put my head in the camera um, to kind of blow the ink. Uh, but it's also great, the baby aspirator is also great because you can soak up the inks either off of the paper or from a dish and splatter it that way. So like you can suck the liquid up in the aspirator and then, um, and then kind of make it explode onto the paper. So I, I love using that. So I let this dry, probably, I think I let it dry overnight before I actually moved on to the next step. Um, and so the next step that I'm doing is I am using some of the alcohol, alcohol <laughs> ink pearls. Um, the colors that I use are Celestial and I also use Enchanted. So this is the Celestial color right here. And I'm just taking and like I said, it's kind of a whole experimentation for me on this card. So I'm just putting the color down and trying to move it around a little bit to what I think looks nice. Um, I do end up using the blending solution. And then I also, um, I think a lot of times for me, I like using the um, isopropyl alcohol. And so I do use that also on this card. So I use the 91% isopropyl alcohol. It's a little more expensive than you know, a lower percentage. Um, but I just got the Kroger brand from um, the grocery and it's lasted me a while. I think I got about a half of a bottle left. So here I'm just putting the isopropyl alcohol in a little container and I'm going to pull that up with my uh, little aspirator there and kind of push it back down onto the page to see what kind of effects I can get. And then I use um, one of my paintbrushes. I am not sure what that paintbrush is called. It's like the fan brush. Um, I think it's a number two, if you're interested in that. Um, so I go ahead and experiment a little with that. And then I take my um, fan brush and dip that in the alcohol and kind of just mess around with the colors to see um, what I can get to happen. But the, um, I have to say, the, the um, baby aspirator, if you have, you know, it's pretty much the same as using a pipette, which I know you can get a lot of pipettes, the plastic ones, um, for fairly inexpensive, but it's, it's kind of the same as that. It, you're just drawing ink up and pushing it down. I just like that the aspirator has the big bulb on it, and so it's a lot easier to pull um, the liquid up and push the liquid down. And also, the only thing bad about the pipettes, the plastic ones, is that they tend to kind of crack after you've used them a few times. And so the um, aspirator is really great because it's probably not going to crack. So, so here I'm just experimenting and um, putting some more alcohol on the paper. And then I'm going to take this snow cap, the uh, alcohol ink snow cap, which shouldn't have much of an effect on the actual, um, what I was doing. I don't know. I was just experimenting, like I said, with almost this whole card. And so I was just kind of seeing if the white would, what the white would do. So I'm just making some splatters and trying different things here. And then while I was waiting for that to dry, I went ahead and I stamped up my flower image and colored that in. And so I'm doing another flower image and I am again using the Ranger Archival Ink on Yupo. And so I'm just going to stamp that out and I set that aside to let it dry before I actually use the uh, put water on it. So you do have to let it dry. 
and then so while I'm waiting for that to dry I'm gonna go ahead and heat emboss the lower portion of the flower stem onto my Yupo paper background um, and Yupo paper does not take heat well um, it will melt it if you leave a steady stream of heat so I did end up warping the paper slightly which I was able to fix when I adhered it to my card base um, but I do use heat on it and so I am so I did take my embossing bag first of all um, all over the card before I even put my Versamark ink down and stamped up my image to make sure that I didn't have items sticking or the um, embossing powder sticking all over the place um, and then I'm using the Recollections Fine Detail White Embossing Powder. And so basically I let my heat gun get warmed up. And then I am just running it over for the shortest amount of time I can. It will heat the embossing powder eventually and melt it. Uh, you just have to be really careful. Like I said, I, I did um, another kind of sample and it really melted the paper really badly. Um, so I was very careful this time not to leave the heat on for too long and it does kind of warp the paper slightly on this one but luckily when I taped down the card base onto my card panel um, towards the end it, it, does, it is, does flatten out flat to the card. So now I'm going to color the second flower. I already did the first one and so I'm going to color the second one. The colors that I'm using are Bavarian Blue and these are the Lindy's Magical Shakers in uh, let's see what colors Bavarian Blue and Larhausen Laurel um, so basically I'm just using these to watercolor I sprinkle the color on my mat the powder color on my mat and then activate it with my um, spritzer my water spritzer and then just I'm taking my paintbrush and dipping it in the color and applying it to the image and then I'll blot where I need to with the paper towel um, and then I end up blotting the whole image of blue and then I go back in with the Larhaus and Laurel color and kind of add some different uh, greens to the flower and then blot that off so it kind of gives it this really pretty um, blue green color. Next I am taking my regular gel and um, this is a matte so this will dry clear so you'll be able to see the color underneath and I'm just taking it with my little plastic spatula and randomly going over different areas just to give it a little bit of dimension um, so you can see it's going to dry clear so that color is going to come through um, and then off camera I took a piece of heat, heat resistant acetate I stamped it with my Versamark ink and heat embossed that with white and then I just uh, fussy cut the acetate to get that background and then I had so many problems trying to figure out how I wanted the flower what I ended up doing was I took the main flower piece and then I took the second flower piece that I colored and I just cut out a few of the petals and so what I'm doing right now is I have put some um, foam tape on the back of it and I'm just popping that up so it's kind of like a dimensional flower and then I will take my Fabrifix glue, which I think is some, I mean, it's mainly for fabrics, um, but it's great. It's a great glue, and um, I needed something that was not going to move around on the acetate. Um, so I just took some of my Fabrifix and put it on one of my acrylic stamping blocks, and I'm taking a toothpick to just put the glue um, in the places where it's going to adhere to that popped up flower piece. And so I'm doing it on the thin white lines and then that will go ahead and adhere to the top of my watercolor flower piece. And then I'll place my acrylic block on that for a few minutes just to make sure that it's set. And then here I used the strongest tape that I have and that is the um, Be Creative tape and it is super strong and so I put that all over the back of my Yupo paper panel and adhered that to my card base and I did have to kind of put some pressure on it since when I did the heat embossing for the stem it warped the paper a little bit uh, but it flattened out really nicely on the card base so I was super happy about that so next I take my crystal Nouveau crystal drops in white 
and water it down with a little bit of water and I'm just splattering making ink splatters probably would be better to do an acrylic paint because it's a little thicker than the drops when they're watered um, but I went ahead and did that and then I took my Fabrifix glue again to adhere the flower to the um, paper the last step is I take a white gel pen and make little dots around some of the circles on the um, the pattern from the stencil and that is it for this card I really loved making this card I think mixed media is probably my favorite um, form of art I guess because it is so freeing um, but I hope you liked it. I absolutely adore this card. Um, it's one of my favorites that I've made. Um, so if you liked it or found this video informative, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you would like to subscribe, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. As always, I will leave information for the products I use below. Um, and please go ahead and check out the Hero Arts Instagram page for information on their uh, what they're doing this month. Um, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope to catch you later.